Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, I simulate cold weather conditions by taking a lithium polymer battery pack and throwing it into my freezer so that you guys never do. Now essentially what this video is gonna be about is operating your lithium polymer battery pack at cold temperatures and also charging it at cold temperatures. Now just before we get into the video, I'd highly recommend that none of you do this. Take extra precaution when you are running and operating your battery pack in colder weather and take absolute precaution when you are charging your battery packs in colder weather. Make sure that battery pack is up to temp. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. Let's get started by throwing our battery pack into the freezer and then taking our first readings by charging up that battery. Here's our cold battery that we pull out of the freezer and we got started here on our charging sequence. We are charging up the battery pack and we're gonna wait that minute so that we can get our first internal resistance reading. Now what you can already see is that the voltage of this battery pack is essentially hitting max voltage. That's 4.20 volts per cell, which tells us that our internal resistance is probably gonna be more than what we've seen on this battery. This is what we've seen for internal resistance on the battery previously and this is what we're going to see here today and as you can see here our internal resistance is significantly higher it's actually dangerously higher in my opinion if we were to draw a lot of power or pump this battery pack up at a high charge rate we would run into all kinds of problems now I'm going to stop this charge cycle and let the battery pack warm up because this is a dangerous operation a dangerous way of charging a battery pack and and I don't want to lead to the thing that we're going to be talking about here in a brief moment. So I stop the charge, I warm it up, and then I'm gonna fully charge it, put it back into the freezer, and then we're gonna run a discharge cycle. But before we get to that, let's talk about exactly what's happening in this charge sequence, in this charge cycle. Maybe it was over a year ago where I did a video and we talked about the chemistry inside of the battery pack, what exactly is happening when we abuse our battery pack, and a lot of what you see here up on this figure is what we covered. We also have a flow chart that we're gonna take a look at briefly here as well, just to kind of identify exactly what happens as an end result of doing this. Now I think this is an important conversation because this is probably one of the most dangerous things that we can do because we don't know exactly what's going wrong until it starts going wrong. And that is, of course, charging your battery pack when your battery is at cold temperatures. My recommendation is that you keep your battery pack at least at an absolute minimum of five degrees Celsius. And if you are charging at this temperature, you should charge at a slow rate. This is at 1C as an absolute maximum. You probably should go even slower than that. What I wanna do here is I wanna focus in on this center section where we can see the lithium dendrite formation. You can see there's these long elements of metal that forms and they begin to become spiky. So what's really happening here is at the low temperatures, the lithium mobility in the electrolyte and the graphite anode slows dramatically. And as a result, the anode here, we can see it on the left-hand side, can't absorb the ions quickly enough. So these metallic lithium deposits occur on the surface instead of intercalating here where they belong, where they should be. What we don't know is this type of thing can happen on the first time that you do it, especially if you really pump up that charge rate and the battery pack is extremely cold. You can get all these elements forming very rapidly. Now, when it comes to concern with this, if you, of course, repeat this type of event, this causes these dendrites to form. And as you can see, as they form, they're going to collect and stack on each other. And if it happens to do exactly that, what kind of concern we get into is that we can actually pierce this separator. We can see the separator here right in the middle of our screen. And we can see that we're actually coming across and digging into that separator with the dendrites formed already in this image. Now, if we continue to form them and it becomes popping out on the other side, that's where you can actually get a short circuit where the positive on one side is connected to the negative on the other side through the separator, then we get into a situation with thermal runaways. And we get a thermal runaway. That essentially means that our temperature is going to increase because there's a short circuit creating more heat. So then the battery gets hotter and we get this continuous 
getting too hot until it bursts into flames and then we can't do anything about it. So this is why I think it's very critical for something like this. Now discharging a battery pack when that battery is below zero degrees Celsius also comes with its own set of consequences. It's not necessarily as dangerous, but it definitely is not safe to discharge a cold battery pack. This is why electric vehicles actually have warmers to keep the battery pack warm, even while charging it warms it and running it, it also warms it. So this is important to take note and make sure we're applying the same thing for our radio controlled battery packs. What we end up running into when we're discharging below that zero degree Celsius mark is reduced available capacity, increased amounts of internal resistance, and we get more mechanical stress on our battery pack. We're gonna switch over to another slide that I did in that one video here. This is the cause and degradation mechanism. I really like this chart. It really shows a lot of cool things going on here. So essentially what we have here is low temperatures, and ultimately this is either charging or discharging. What we're getting here is low lithium plating. This is something that can happen in both that charging and discharging uh, sequence. We get the dendrite formation as well that we spoke about. And both of these lead to loss of our lithium inventory, the amount of lithium that's essentially in a cell, and we lose the active anode material. Both of these elements contribute to the effects that we don't want. We don't want a decrease in capacity. This is measured in milliamp hour, and we don't want a increase in internal resistance. And this type of operation does both of these at the end of the day. So the more that you operate in these colder temperatures without making certain that your battery pack is warm, the more you're gonna deal with the in decrease in capacity and increase in our internal resistance. Now do keep in mind as you use the battery pack under load, it keeps itself warm. And just to make sure you can go ahead and make certain that is true by measuring the temperature every so often of that pack. Pack. Here's a few curves that you see up on the screen and I really wanna break this graph down for you because there's a lot going on here in these curves and graph. So essentially what we've done here is broken it into a couple sections. Here on the top section, we are comparing the voltage of our cold versus warm battery, warm being of course room temperature. And then on the bottom section, we have current where we're displaying cold versus our warm battery pack. So let's dive into it and see exactly what we have starting off with voltage. So our voltage axis here is on the right hand side, goes all the way to 4.2. And most of the information that we're dealing with is somewhere around 2.94 and up. And as you can see here, as we get closer to the left hand side, we start off at that 4.2 volt. And as soon as I punch it, so full load of the battery packs, which is about 105 amps on a good healthy battery, pack on average and for the entire duration of the pack, we can see that it dumps and dips all the way to 2.94, actually under 2.94 volts there. And then it hits the cutoff, which saves the battery pack. And then it jumps back up to a voltage. We hit it again and we pull, we're going to cover the current here. We pull some more current and it hits that voltage cutoff again. So every time you see this flat line on the top section of our voltage curve in red, this is our cold battery pack giving it some time to rest and then we're reloading it in order to see what kind of performance we can extract from it. And you do have to keep in mind that as we go through this, this battery obviously is no longer in the freezer. So what's happening with it as it's under load is it's rapidly getting warmer. By the time we end up nearing the end of our run, near the last minute of this run even, this battery pack is essentially above 30 degrees Celsius. Right near the very end, it's over 50 degrees Celsius. Just to give Give you an idea as to the temperature that we actually hit. We started well under zero degrees Celsius. We end well over 50 degrees Celsius. So that is key in this because as we go through, we can see that we're slowly able to extract more power out of this battery. We see that voltage dump becoming less and less as we move forward. And now if we take a look at our warm battery packs curve, this is the dark one in black here. We can see a nice consistent, it's not an exact line. We do have some noise in our curve. However, it starts off at 4.2, it dumps while it's under load. And keep in mind this load is, we can sneak over to our current curve, is around that 100 amp mark and it maintains that voltage or thereabouts and slowly drops off to our cutoff point until it returns back to a resting voltage. Now, if we shift gears and take a look at the current 
current curve, you can see as we had this massive voltage dump under 2.94 volts, we only drew about 70 amps or so when it did that. And then we allowed it to rest for a brief couple seconds. And then we ended up hitting a low voltage cutoff again, but that was at less than 60 amps. Then we repeat this as it warms up the battery pack over this time. This is me trying to ease into the load of our battery pack. So I'm loading up more and more and more and more until it hits that cutoff again. And then we were able to see that we're pulling about 50 amps when it hit that cutoff here. And our voltage, obviously it's much lower than our curve there in black. So what this is already telling us when the battery pack is at this point, which is negative degrees Celsius, we know that we're only able to extract about 50 amps from it. And as we do that, we're actually having a much lower overall voltage from it hitting essentially that voltage cutoff of this unit in comparison to when that battery pack is more closer to room temperature. So there's a significant dip in power. We're talking half the power output is gone because the temperature of this battery pack, that is significant. Never have I seen this type of information before and never would have I been able to guess that it's actually this rough. So as we go and continue our run, we know it's getting warmer and warmer and we can see as our curve gets stronger and stronger, this is because the battery's heating up and that internal resistance is beginning to lower as the battery heats up and we can get extract more power with less voltage drop. So here we're able to hit just under 60. Here we're at 60 amps and then it hits the voltage cutoff. Then we ramp it back up again. We're almost at 80 amps and then we start to get just over the 80 amp mark here and closer to 90 amp marks until 90 amp mark until we finally, you know, reach around that 90 to 92 amp mark right from, this is essentially at 100% load of what we do for our battery test until the very end of the run. So that's really it guys, when it comes to looking at the performance that you get out of a battery when it's cold. And keep in mind that's really largely on the left hand side, significantly this first couple curves, even after it gets probably several degrees warmer after these initial, you know, dumps of power. Hour. Well guys, I hope that leaves you with a better understanding as to what's going on when your battery pack is cold and some of the precautions that you must take when you want to use your battery pack or charge it when you're operating in cold temperatures. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.